Hello, today we will deal with the relationship between potassium and blood pressure. So we have a guy and we take the blood, uh, we, we take the blood pressure from him and we see that the blood pressure is very, very high. Then we look at the lab values and we see that the lab values are very low of potassium. So we have a hypokalemia, meaning a low amount of potassium in the blood, and we have a hypertension, so hypertension. That means a high amount of tension or blood pressure in the body. And this is the relationship usually. If you have a low amount of potassium, then you have a high amount of blood pressure. If you have a normal level of potassium, then you have a, 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 a lowered blood pressure. I, 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 I didn't want to say then you have a normal blood pressure because that, that would not be true. So if you have a normal potassium, you don't you don't have normal blood pressure. The only thing is that you have a lower blood pressure. Because of course, blood pressure is not only dependent on potassium, but it has been seen that if you have a blood pressure patient and you increase the potassium intake, and what, which is the most important way to in increase the intake of potassium? A diet. And which, which diet is the most important? fruits vegetables in general actually when we're talking about diet then please eat a lot of fruit and vegetables in these you will find a lot of potassium if you eat a lot of potassium then the blood pressure will drop okay and what is the normal level of potassium intake 40 to 120 the goal in hypertension patient is to reach 120 millimol per day if you have less than 40 millimole per day, then you can expect the blood pressure to increase. And then you need to give diet. If diet does not help, then you need to supplement it with, with potassium and you need to find out why did it not help. Because there are diseases that can then increase the blood pressure and can decrease potassium. And if the diet does not help, then probably it's one of these diseases. I will only mention three here. One is primary aldosteronism. The other is Cushing syndrome. And the third one is renovascular disease. So once again, we have primary aldosteronism, Cushing disease, and renovascular disease. These three diseases has to be searched for if the potassium level is not uh, increased by diet and we need to supplement it with potassium so and which patients are not allowed to take potassium because that's the flip coin of it if you give too much potassium and then that's not good either uh, for example if patients are taking medications like ACE inhibitors or they are taking potassium sparring diuretics or if they have a disease uh, for example, chronic kidney disease, in these patients, then you have to watch out and not, uh, not give too much uh, potassium. And as we said, the goal is 120. But it's also important to have a balance between sodium and potassium. So the sodium-potassium ratio, sodium divided by potassium, does, uh, is not allowed to be too high. Because as we know, if you increase sodium too much, that, so that's salt. So if you eat too much salt, then that will also increase blood pressure. So the ratio is important. So of course, if you eat normal diet with normal amount of potassium, that's good. But please don't eat too much salt because the ratio is also important, not just the potassium level. So to conclude, uh, we will say that the normal level is 40 to 120. Please go for the 120 millimole per day. And how? Eat fruits and vegetables. And if you do that, your blood pressure will drop. Of course, not to normal level, but it will drop. It's depend, it depends, of course, of which, which level you were at. If you were at very high levels, then this will not help alone. But if you only had a, a, a small increase of blood pressure, then this potassium will certainly help you. So thank you very much for listening.